here's a good question. Can you actually grow your muscles when you're doing intermittent fasting and keto? Now, I have done other videos on this, but I want to go more into the exercise part of this because if you're doing intermittent fasting and keto and you're not doing exercise, you're not going to grow your muscles, okay? Why? Because the most important stimulus to muscle hypertrophy, which is growing muscle, is the intensity of the exercise, okay? Intensity of the exercise. Now, before I get into the exercise part, I want to talk about the foundation that surrounds this because when you do intermittent fasting consistently and you're actually adapted to ketosis, you will have higher levels of human growth hormone. And human growth hormone does cause the growth of muscle and it also prevents the loss of muscle. Now, on the opposite spectrum, if you're eating frequently through the day and you have insulin resistance and you have blood sugar issues, or you're pre-diabetic or a diabetic, you're going to have less amino acids going into that muscle. You're going to have more atrophy. So this is an important principle to consume two meals a day, uh, maybe even one meal a day, but I think two meals a day would be perfect. Maybe keep your carbs at the higher end, but not over that, about 50 grams per day, because it is true that carbohydrates do stimulate insulin, and insulin is an anabolic hormone. However, we don't want to go too high because we were trying to prevent insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So if we provide the, the uh, top limit of carbs, I think that would be a smart thing to do. And of course, we want to make sure that we have enough complete protein for the muscles to choose from, but not go too much. So seven to eight ounces of protein per meal would be a really good option. What you have to realize is that when you consume protein, whether it's meat, fish, or eggs, or whatever, minimally, at least half of that is wasted as glucose fuel, because it tr protein turns into glucose, or as uh, nitrogen waste. So you're not really absorbing 100% of that unless you're taking certain types of amino acid uh, blends. So by adding a ton of protein with your meals, that will not help you with this. It just creates more stress on your kidney, and your liver, and it can actually increase your glucose a little bit too much. And of course, sufficient sleep is very, very important because if you're not sleeping, you increase the stress and the hormone cortisol breaks down muscle protein. Now, this data that I'm going to tell you about right now uh, is very, very powerful. And uh, I got this from an interview from Dorian Yates. So he actually achieved Mr. Olympia six times. So I wanted to see what he had to say about muscle growth, and I really liked his data. Now, it is true that most bodybuilders, including him, took a lot of steroids and growth hormones. However, I really um, liked his philosophy on muscle growth, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, personally, I am not doing it simply because that's not my goal right now, but I think um, it's worth looking at. This is what he said. Now, he'll start off with some warm-up sets, okay, some lightweight, just like most people will do that. So you warm up the muscle with some lighter weights, but then he will do one insanely, extremely difficult set of about six to eight reps. So he will do these reps to total failure and beyond, okay? So he will go as hard as he can, and then we can't go anymore. He'll get someone to spot him and assist him with a few more reps, okay? So he's going beyond total failure. And uh, that's based on this principle of intensity right here. I mean, he is maximizing that uh, workout intensity because really what you're trying to do is you're trying to damage the muscle. You're trying to destroy that muscle through difficulty. Now, a couple key points to this. You want to keep perfect form, okay? And you don't want to recruit other muscles. And you don't want to create momentum as you're working out. You're trying to isolate one muscle at a time to maximum failure and beyond. But there's something else that he said that is really, really cool. When you uh, work a muscle, you're going to, let's say you're doing bench press, you're going to contract the pec, okay? So you're, you're coming out like this, and then you're going to come back, right? So you have concentric movement, which is contraction, then you have eccentric movement, which is lengthening. So if I'm coming down in a bench press, 
my pecs are lengthening. And the eccentric part, which is the negative part, is actually stronger than the concentric part. But it's often neglected. So what he does, with help, he will also then focus on the negative part and bring that to failure. So if you were to have someone spot you in a bench press and you've just did eight reps to total failure, you would have them assist you on the concentric part, okay, help you lift it all the way up, and then you would just bring it down slowly, okay, and you would keep doing that until you can't do it anymore to failure. That way you completely and utterly exhaust that muscle uh, to the point where you create some serious damage. Now, he's only going to work that muscle once a week. He's not going to hit it tomorrow or the next day. So he works at one muscle per week. And here's the key. You let it recover fully, 100%. Here's a big mistake that a lot of people do is they work out when that muscle is incomplete that hasn't healed. So that's when you create scar tissue and injury. So this, number five, allowing your muscle to recover fully is what makes the muscle get bigger, okay? The exercise, the intensity is just the damage of the muscle and then you let it heal. And so then the next time you work out, you're a little bit stronger. And at some point you want to keep increasing the weight more and more and more until the muscle grows. So you don't want to go for momentum. You want controlled, isolated movement with a pause. So if you're doing a bench press, you come all the way to the end, and you pause, and then come all the way back. And you come back on the eccentric part slower than this part right here. So we have some warm-ups, one intense set per exercise. Now he may hit that muscle like the pec with maybe three to four to five different exercises. But he's only going to do that one intense to total failure and beyond uh, once per week. And for details and all this, definitely get one of his books and you can read up on it. Um, he works out one hour per day, only four times a week. On the off days, he did cardio, which actually helps the recovery. Now, of course, if you're going to do this you do not want to jump into this right away because you could hurt yourself. You want to go into this very, very gradual, probably hire a personal trainer to help you. And you want to, uh, over a period of weeks, build up to this intense total failure and beyond uh, set. But I really think if you combine this with your keto intermittent fasting, keep your stress low, good sleep, you're going to be able to get muscle hypertrophy. All right, and number five, very important. Okay, this is going to get you this right here. So you have to work out intensely to create the damage and the soreness, and then you have to recover completely for you to be able to have this occur. So it might take longer than a week. It could take two weeks, and sometimes maybe even three if you're just starting out. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you have a question about a product, or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.